No worries. It was just an offhand question. It's been bothering me for a while. Even when I'm awake, the question haunts me like a bad dream. I still haven't found a good answer to it. Or maybe... It was never a correct answer in the first place. Sounds great to me. I don't even want to think about this project anymore. But what should we do? Huh? Where did that come from? I mean, it's not like it's some kind of secret. You probably already know some bits and pieces of my past. My mother is also an architect. I've always adored her drawings, and when I was young, I used to sit next to her and watch her bring all kinds of buildings to life on paper. You could say my interest in architecture just naturally grew with time. Perhaps. In fact, I have also seen my mother argue with her clients, but she would always quickly find the motivation to return to her work. Unfortunately, I've barely had any contact with her since she remarried and moved abroad. Even if I wanted to ask her about her ability to stay positive after an argument, it would seem rude to barge into her life again over something as trivial as that. I did remember something else, though. When my mother left, she only carried some small personal luggage with her. She left most of the belongings in the house to me. At the time, she even told me that it would be great if I could learn a few lessons from her life experiences, so my life and career could go a little more smoothly. I hadn't quite come to grips with my emotions, and didn't really have it in me to go through any sentimental items, so I just packed anything with memories away in a box and haven't reopened it since. It's been a really long time. Now that so many years have passed, Maybe I have finally developed the maturity I need to face those memories without losing my mind. Yeah, I should dig it out and take a look. Uh, huh? Ah, uh, uh, sorry, I've had too much to drink and wasn't thinking clearly. You're right, I should do these kinds of things with the support of a friend. Uh, speaking of that... I can call you a friend now, right? Either way, thanks for reminding me that I can invite you to come along. Had I just gone back by myself, it would have looked like I'm deliberately trying to keep things from you. Ugh, thinking too hard about the words is giving me a headache, so I'll just give it to you straight. <clears throat> thanks to your advice, I have decided to put my current projects on pause for now, and spend some time trying to rekindle the passion for my craft. If you want to stick around and see how this will turn out, you'll be sure to encounter some bits and pieces of my past. Do you think you'd find that too boring? All right, then let's head back together. I mean, you already know where I live. <laughs> Who knew that the day would come when I too would have some friends over? Let me see. I should have tidied up the place before I left the house this morning. I'll hate them shouldn't be home now either. He's usually in the records room at this time of the day. Anyway, there's no more time for drinks. I'll go take care of the bill. All hate them isn't in, so feel free to sit wherever. I'll bring out the box. Oh, nothing. I just didn't realize how much time had passed. The box is pretty dusty, which means it's already been a while since I've moved into this place. And many years since my mother moved to Fontaine. I'm happy for her. I hope she'll be able to find happiness there. She raised me all by herself after my father passed away. It definitely wasn't easy for her. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, let's see what I packed into this box. Are all these things? Oh, I remember now. This is a drawing I made in Port Ormos. Obviously, I wouldn't call it anything special now, but I was less than five years old when I made this drawing. 
That's more than 20 years ago. <laughs> you could say it's pretty good for a child of that age. Hmm, now that I've said that out loud, I suppose I do have some level of artistic talent, right? Criticism and self-doubt have always been a part of the artistic process. Without criticism, there can be no improvement. It's normal for me to question my abilities from time to time. I admit that I may have spent a little too long questioning myself this time around, but as you know, the heart tends to dwell on whatever it pleases. <sighs> anyway, never mind. The more I talk about it, the less confident I feel. Let's see what else we have in the box. Ah! My building blocks! It's been years since I've last seen these. When I was a kid, I used to stack them super high, and could even stabilize the tower to keep it from tumbling over. Oh, and this blueprint. <laughs> I made it by copying my mother's sketch, and the aspect ratio was horrendous. It's still technically the first blueprint I made myself, though. I was super proud of myself when I finished it, and put it in the same pile as my mother's sketches, hoping she'd notice and compliment me for my good work. Unfortunately, my mother didn't realize that I had put it there. When she had a meeting with a client, the next day she handed my blueprint to him by mistake. The client was completely confused by this new blueprint, but apparently he felt too tongue-tied to question such a famous architect. It was only a few days later that he finally gathered up the courage to pay my mother a visit. He asked, The door in this blueprint is even taller than the roof. Is this supposed to be part of the design? My mother took me with her to personally apologize to the client several times. She didn't scold me about it in private, though. Instead, she went over all the steps required to draw a good blueprint, and was very patient throughout the whole process. I still remember it like it was yesterday. Hmm... Let's see, is there anything else left in this box? Huh. What was this again? Ah, this is my mother's notebook. She used to write and sketch in it all the time. When I was a child, I used to be super fascinated by this notebook, and always pestered my mother to let me read it. After asking her a few times, she told me that I could read it as long as I could guess the password. Huh. I wonder why she didn't take this notebook with her. Did she leave it to me on purpose? <laughs> if only I could. I never managed to guess the password. Hey, it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of inspiration. That's what we need to guess the password. Who knows, maybe this time something will click in my head and the answer will just present itself. Let me think. What could it be? <laughs> I could tell what you were thinking. Don't worry, I tried all the easy guesses a long time ago. I've tried my name, my father's name, my mother's name, my grandparents' names on both sides, and all of our birthdays. I've tried every name and number remotely related to my family. I've even tried stuff like Love You Cave, Take Care, and Yours Truly. I've tried every cheesy phrase and well wish in the book, but this lock has refused to budge. I wouldn't try that route again. I have a hunch that it won't be that simple. Also, if she really did use something like that, she'd never hear the end of it from the folks over at Haravatat if they ever found out. So we could find someone who was close to my mother and see if they might know anything? Hmm... I see what you're saying, but who should we talk to for that? My mother was never really the one to be social. My father was the one with more friends, but all those connections were severed when he died. Let me think. Is there still someone at the Academia who would know my mother? Ah, actually, there is someone. Professor Zaha Hadi. Huh, you've never really heard of her? She's a famous Gasharwar scholar and leading expert in formal garden design. My mother studied under her as a student many years ago. Professor Zaha Hadi published many works during her career, so I was able to learn a lot by studying her essays. If there's anyone who still remembers my mom, it'd be her. She's older now and is no longer teaching at the academia. 
But if I remember correctly, she spends most of her time around the Bimarstan area. Let's go take a look. We might run into her if we're lucky. Hmm. What am I supposed to do now? Ah, forget it. I'll just head back. Tainari? What are you doing here? Oh, it's you. Good to finally see you again. I came into the city to buy some experiment reagents, hoping to bring them back with me to Gandarvaville. But as soon as I got here, I noticed someone banging on Cyrus's door. You've all heard of Cyrus, right? He's an ex-sage and Sino's adoptive father. I was thinking about going over to ask what's happening. That granny over there may appear old and frail, but her vocal cords certainly sound loud and healthy as ever. Granny? Yeah, she's just over there. You can go check out the situation yourselves in a moment. <laughs> Kave, were you at the tavern? I had a quick drink or two. Can you still smell the alcohol? Drinking in broad daylight. Really? You want to pass out by the road and get run over by a sumpter beast like some mindless fungus, huh? And you, traveler? You didn't try to stop him? Um, uh, I... Uh... <sighs> you look like a wreck, Kave. What happened? Are you feeling down again? <sighs> you know what? I'm hosting a meal at Pardis the Eye tomorrow evening. Do you want to come? Uh huh? Oh, I had no idea. Uh, let me think for a moment. Uh, I'll come if I can find some time. All right. Then I'll plan on reserving two seats for you. I'll be heading back to Gandarvaville for now. I have a feeling that argument over there is going to continue for quite some time. It might be best if we don't get involved. A granny who lives nearby. Let's go take a look. Ha! So, plan on keeping yourself locked in there, huh? Fine by me. If you're not going to come out, then I'm not going to leave. My tomato was growing so well, it had all the potential to become the best tomato this year. And you cut it straight from the vine! I already told you I had nothing to do with it. Why would I take a tomato that's still weeks from ripening? You'd have to be awfully green as an investigator to think it was me. Ugh. <laughs> you see, the word green here can refer to both the color of the tomato and the fact that your skills could use some. Enough nonsense! Just come out and face me, you coward! You're out of your mind. If I've actually done something wrong, then get a mantra and pull me out by force, why don't ya? Oh, why you? Professor Zahahadi? And who are you? Oh, Kave. Fancy seeing you here. How long has it been? Come on, get over here and let the professor take a good look at you. Not bad, not bad. You've grown taller again. Um, Professor, what's going on here? Ah, uh, it's no big deal, really. A few of us old scholars got bored in our retirement and decided to put together a vegetable growing competition. At the end, whoever loses will have to go up on stage and do a performance for the winners. Which brings us to our current predicament. <laughs> My tomato was sure to win until a certain someone decided they couldn't bear to lose. Hey, don't try to defame me in front of the kids! If we're airing out each other's dirty laundry now, then why don't we talk about you sneaking into Janat's garden the other night? Ahem! <clears throat> Lucky for you, seeing these youngsters come to pay their respects today has put me in a better mood. I'll let you off the hook, for now. Come on, let's go. 
We'll take our conversation elsewhere. He doesn't need to be a part of it. Uh, uh yes, uh, of course. Is Farinak still doing well? Yes, as far as I know. She left for Fontaine some time ago and started a new life for herself. She's still doing work related to architecture, though. Ah, yes. I did hear about that. Did that upset you at all? No, not at all. She's already sacrificed a lot raising me as a single mother. That's good to hear. Your mother did struggle quite a bit those few years. It's probably a good thing that she found a new place to call home. Sometimes I wonder if things were harder for her because she was so beautiful. People were always drawn to her beauty first, only to realize she had a sensitive and vulnerable heart underneath. She was still quite young when she first joined my class as a student. Beautiful and radiant with her golden hair, yet quiet and single-minded. She seemed like a lass from some aristocratic house who was seeing the outside world for the first time. She had to make a lot of drastic changes in her life to raise you on her own. Even during her time in the academia, she was a thorough perfectionist. If she was unsatisfied with something she had made, she'd insist on redoing it, even if I was perfectly happy with it. She had many admirers, and they'd always fill up the first few rows of seats, hoping they could get closer to her sitting in the first row. If it were any of my other classes, you'd have found nobody sitting in the front. But every time I saw her, she was always in that same rigid pose. She'd have one hand on her forehead, with the other clutching her pencil. Her eyebrows would be knitted in a frown as she concentrated on the blueprint in front of her. I'm sure she had many difficult moments in her life. How did she cope with the stress? I'm not too sure. She never talked about such things with me. She rarely opened up to other people, you know. I do remember one time, though, when she got into a heated argument with a friend. She said something I found very memorable. She said, True art cannot be understood, but as an artist, I wish some people could understand its meaning and value. If you ask me, that's probably the greatest source of pain for geniuses of their craft. It's extremely hard for them to find someone who can truly understand their ideas. So that's how it is. Hmm. I wonder if the password could be... I tried both just now. It seems those aren't it either. What are you trying to do? My mother left her notebook to me, but it has a password and I haven't figured out what it is yet. I'm trying to learn more about her so I'd have a better chance at cracking the code. Thank you for all that you told us. <laughs> it's the least I can do. Talking to youngsters like yourself makes me feel younger too. Honestly, looking at you now, I can see how much you resemble her. It's almost as if she's standing right in front of me again. Your personalities are quite alike, too. You're both stubborn and both a little awkward. Of course, I'm sure the similarities are mostly superficial. But so long as you continue to harbor those traits, you'll find a lot of difficulties in your work. I've taught a lot of students over my career, and in my experience, very few genius architects of Kasharawar ever found happiness for themselves. They would know exactly what they want to express and fight for it tooth and nail, which inevitably led to arguments with their clients. Some clients would choose to respect the architect's vision or just let the argument go because of the architect's reputation, but... Those are the rare ones. When Farnak first graduated, she was getting into arguments with her clients nearly every single day. I think it only got a little better when she met your father. I see. But could he understand the designs my mother made? No, I think they were probably beyond him, too. 
But despite that, he still stayed next to her, listening to her joys and sharing in her sorrows. Farnak had many admirers, but she ended up choosing your father. His support probably played a part in that decision. Hmm. So instead of understanding, perhaps all we need is just companionship. Huh. It worked. Oh. Was that the right password? Yes! Then you should be on your way, child. Find a quiet place and see what she wanted to say to you. Being the awkward person that she is, I suppose there were many things that Farnet could never say out loud. Instead, she probably left them in her diary, hoping that they would make their way to you one day. If you're ever in a mood to chat again, just come and find me here. You're always welcome to discuss architecture topics with me as well. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> There's no need to be so formal. I'll let you kids go. It's time for me to take another stroll around the vegetable garden. I wonder what my mother could have written about. They all say Zaha Hadid's class is the toughest, but I think it's actually not too bad. On the other hand, though, structural mechanics is definitely a pain, no matter how you try to approach it. <sighs> I doubled down and managed to get through it in the end. I met someone special. At first, I didn't think much of him, <laughs> but now I feel very happy whenever I get to spend time with him. We decided to name our son Kave. I don't think a younger me would have ever imagined forming such an intimate bond with another person. Back then, I lived only in the shadow of myself, as well as that of the dream in my heart. The bad news came. And even though it's been several days now, I still can't bring myself to come to terms with what happened. My eyes are so swollen, it's hard to see. What if they're all lying to me? And this is just a long, cruel dream. <sighs> but I have to face reality. I still have someone to take care of. No matter what happens, I'll do my best to raise my son on my own. Huh? Is this... a drawing? Seems like it was done by my mother. This blonde man was probably my father, but who are the other people in the picture? Huh? Why do a few of them look somewhat familiar? From the dates in the notebook, she probably drew this more than 30 years ago. I hadn't even been born yet. Maybe we were thinking too much. Oh, there are a few lines written in the diary about this as well. The one who invited us to the gathering is a talkative woman. Including us, three couples showed up. There was also a person who came alone. The talkative woman introduced everyone to each other. She spoke really quickly, so I couldn't quite catch everything she said. But I also didn't feel like asking her to repeat herself. My husband seems to be friends with the man with long ears. I couldn't really join their conversation, so I've resigned myself to sitting in a corner and drawing in my notebook. I don't think I'd be able to become friends with any of these people, especially that stiff-looking couple. That man is certainly very handsome, but he would constantly alternate between disjointed and serious ways of talking. His wife is a bit more bearable. We were not acquainted with each other to begin with, and I doubt we'll see each other again after this gathering. The ambiance of this gathering is surprisingly pleasant, however. Talking to people can allow us to find some peace after a long day. Maybe my son will also partake in these gatherings in the future. I hope he'll be able to make many friends. Who would have thought my mother used to attend that kind of thing? It seems she was only good at talking about her own work, 
and found it difficult to join into other conversations. As a result, she often kept to herself and would be off to the side, drawing. There's more written on the back. Oh, it seems like it was written to me. Kave. I was both overjoyed and distressed when I learned of your decision to continue your studies in Kasharwar. You are very talented, and I am confident that you will become an architect of much acclaim. However, the more talented you are as an artist, the more misery and anguish you may encounter. No one will be able to help you during your journey as an artist. But outside of your life as a creator, you can learn to form connections with other people and enjoy many other things in life. It's the only way to alleviate your suffering. Whenever you feel down, seek out a friend to sit and have a chat. You can accumulate joy and fulfillment by spending time with them. The positive feelings you gain will get you through the long and difficult years. Never forget that companionship is the most important thing of all. So that's the answer she prepared for me. She really thought long and hard about me and my future. Well, now that I've read her words, do you think I should accept Tainari's invite and attend that dinner at Pardis Di? Uh... The thought definitely crossed my mind. Although it'd be nice to get together with friends and chat the night away, I don't want to bring down other people's moods because I'm sad. Besides, don't most people hate the feeling of seeing their friends troubled and being unable to help? And what's worse, nearly all of my problems can't be easily resolved with some encouraging words or gesture. And don't forget, I'm also older than all of them. As their senior, I should appear to be a bit more responsible. Huh, you're right. <sighs> I really didn't expect to run into him here. I swear, his nose must be just as sensitive as his ears. Well then, I guess... It's best that we go and join him for dinner. <sighs> that means I'll owe him yet another meal now. You know what? I'm not going to overthink it. I'll see you tomorrow at Pardis Di. Oh, Haytham also got my invite, right? Will he be coming to join us? Hmm. <laughs> That guy, he's never been a fan of social gatherings. I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. Are you sure? All right, then. I guess we won't wait for him. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I mean, maybe we should give him a little more time. We can keep chatting for a while longer. Oh, sure. You still haven't told me... What's the occasion for getting us together here at Pardis Di? We're celebrating the end of the first phase of Kale's studies. I wanted to thank you all for the help you've given her along the way. Then where's Kale? She said she wanted to show everyone a bit of what she's learned, so she's still doing some last-minute prep at home. She'll be here shortly. Anyway, let's get started. <sighs> to tell you the truth, I'm actually not so confident that the second phase will go as well as the first. The curriculum will become a lot more involved, and I'm worried that she won't be able to get through all of it. I was hoping we could brainstorm about it together before she gets here. I knew this wouldn't be just a simple free dinner. Is that why you also invited Al Haytham? Yes. I thought it would be good if we could all put our heads together about this. Anyway, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. What did you guys do when you ran into a problem that you didn't know how to solve? Or got assigned a project that you knew you weren't going to finish on time? Never happened to me. I'd just pull another all-nighter. You two are hopeless. Does anyone have a more useful answer to the question? 
Ooh, that's a good point. Confidence is the most important thing. Once you lose your sense of confidence, it'll become all but impossible to find the motivation to study. Hmm. This could be a potential direction. I have already redesigned the literacy curriculum, and I was originally hoping to ask Alhatham for his opinion, but... It's very simple. Instead of focusing on the amount of material you would like to teach, focus on the amount the student would be able to remember. Wow, you actually showed up. I could probably count the number of times you've actually come to gatherings like this on just one hand. It's still more than the number of times you've managed to get a proposal approved on the first try. Hmm. As long as you're still aware. So, what made the difference this time? Are you looking to drink your sorrows away with some friends? That's your purpose for being here, not mine. Don't project your ways of thinking onto me. So you're saying the only reason you came is to help Tainari with his brainstorming? Precisely. Kale will have a long road in front of her. Hey, just to get one thing clear. Even if Kale manages to make her way to the Academia, we cannot let her enroll in her Avatat. Kasharwar is obviously the best choice for her. She's been a trainee forest ranger for so long, she'll definitely be good with her hands. What are you saying? Spontamad is the better choice. It's where I graduated from, after all. Then what about Amorta? That's the Darshan her master actually graduated from. There are only two other Darshans left. We might as well select all of them on her enrollment application. You? I'm trying to have a serious discussion here. Traveler, you aren't associated with any of the six Darshans. In your opinion, which Darshan would be the best choice for Kale? Well said. Agreed. And my goal in inviting you here was to gather some thoughts on the execution of this second phase. Phase two far exceeds phase one in both curriculum complexity and the speed of instruction. I hope Kali has prepared herself for what is coming. Hey, what are you thinking now? Please don't tell me you're planning on lending her those abstruse books from your home library. Actually, I was thinking about lending her a professions guide. I'll make sure to write, Don't Become an Architect, on the front page of that. <laughs> You're right, I can't deny that. Is there another phase after phase two? What's the ultimate goal of all of this? Are we trying to prepare her for a job in the academia? Uh, <laughs> we don't need to think that far ahead. Uh, hold that thought, though. I think my vegetables are done. I'm telling you, that client had no idea what he was talking about. No matter what I did, he had something bad to say about it. Have you considered finding another client? Ah, they're all the same. I haven't had a good night's sleep for months now. <laughs> Who do they think they are, ordering me to alter my design over and over again just because they have some Mora? It's too late now to change careers. You might as well try to find some joy in the pain. Besides, you'll be getting up in the middle of the night to make edits to your own design even when the client doesn't request it. No. <laughs> That's not true. Cheer up, Kave. I'll tell you a new joke. We'll save that for the end, Sino. You can keep it to yourself until then. <sighs> I... Whatever. I'm not going to use my brain anymore. Let's drink tonight to our heart's content. Slightly different style. Hmm, uh, give me a minute. Most architects would probably prioritize cutting costs and removing extra features in this situation. Indeed, converting the building into a simple bungalow would solve most of our problems. However, I do not think this would be the best solution. 
While it's true that the aesthetic value of a building is often viewed as an afterthought, neglecting it has some long-term negative consequences. It is especially undesirable in this situation, as the library will serve a high number of children, many of whom would have never been exposed to structures that may be considered elegant or beautiful. To completely give up on the more aesthetic design would mean stripping the children of an opportunity to appreciate the beauty of architecture. I share Badawi's sentiments in wanting to preserve a more complex design. However, if we can reduce the ornate aspects of the design while maintaining its fundamental elegance, which is to say we won't touch the arches and stone pillars but make changes elsewhere, hmm, this is definitely a first. To make up for the loss of regular details, we would need to put a lot of extra effort into the layout, lines, and color. I see. Would that really be okay? It just increases the difficulty of the design. <laughs> you should feel lucky that out of all the architects in the city, you chose to approach me. Most of the others would have given up on this project by now. As for inspiration, I think I might have something in mind. But I'd need to visit the site to make sure. Where do you want this place to be built? Tell me the exact location. Aru Village. Although it wasn't my childhood home, I think it'll be the best site for such a building. Okay, then we can pay a visit to Aru Village. Is there something I can do for you? I've already caused you a lot of trouble before, and now you're revising the design again because of me. Which draft are we even on now? <laughs> it's making me feel terribly guilty. Let me think. You said you used to be an Eremite mercenary, right? In that case, you could help us clear out some monsters that are blocking the way to Aru Village. We want to keep the roads clear, and reduce the loss of materials during transport to a minimum. If everything goes well, that'll help us save some Mora. All right, just leave it to me. <laughs> if there's anything I'm good at, it's clearing out monsters. What are you waiting for, then? Let's pack up and get ready to go. Most materials going from Caravan Rebot to Aru Village would pass through here. There are a lot of monsters out here today. If you find it hard to keep up, just let us know. Oh, don't worry about me. This is nothing. I'll be careful, though, and you should do the same. Come at me! Boring! Surrender! Scanning! Fine. <laughs> I've spent my entire life fighting these kinds of monsters in the desert, after all. They won't get the best of me. But it's one thing to fight against monsters, and another to fight against an old injury. Uh, it's something I picked up when I was young. There were many fights between mercenary brigades back then, and one day someone stabbed me in the back. I don't think much of it back then, but with age... It's caught up to me. Few mercenaries get to enjoy their later years. Failing health tends to take the joy out of reputation and wealth. And many mercenaries never even made much of the latter to begin with. Is there someone you know who can help to look after you? Uh, unfortunately, no. My wife passed away at an early age, and I don't have any children. Sometimes I'd close my eyes and realize most of my life story has already been written. I have many regrets about my past, but at the same time I also know 
that there were never many options for me in the first place. I joined the Eremites when I was young, and won many battles with them. My survival was more a matter of luck than actual ability. If at all possible, I want future children of the desert to have some more options in life. I don't want them to turn out like me. <laughs> My apologies. The older we get, the more we tend to ramble. Seems like we've already cleared out most of the monsters. Let's hurry over to Aru village. I think it's really admirable of him to spend his whole life's savings on people he's never met. Maybe he's doing this out of natural kindness. A kindness that hasn't been eroded away by the struggles of his life. Perhaps. To clarify, though, I don't think I'm quite the same. Some people call me an idealist. I do have some sentiments of that general persuasion, such as wanting everyone to be able to lead a happy life. But my situation is more complex than that. In the beginning, what drove me to harbor those thoughts was less idealism and more a desire to make up for a sense of guilt. When I was young, I impulsively encouraged my father to take part in the first Interdarshan Championship hosted by the Academia. He set off confidently hoping to win something for me, but failed to clinch the title. What's more, he fell into depression after the competition and requested to join an investigative research project in the desert. I never saw him again. Word has it that he got caught in quicksand. Even if other factors may have contributed to his death, the fundamental cause still circles back to me. I started doing many things in life because I wanted to make amends. Even in cases where I couldn't do something for a specific person, I still did whatever I could. I think I just wanted to make myself feel a little better. At this point, even I don't know. I've tried self-reflection, but it didn't help. I can't seem to walk away from many things that I see or hear about, even if they don't directly concern me. And I can't quite pinpoint the source of it. Maybe it's just like what those Vahumana scholars often say. It's hard for people to truly understand themselves. I could be doing things out of endless guilt, or I could be doing them out of a strong sense of empathy. It could even just be a matter of conceit. The potential motivations could number in the dozens, but the actions they result in are the same. Anyway, I suppose I don't really mind being called an idealist. They also used that term to describe my father. It seemed to carry fewer connotations back when he was around. I've known Al Haytham for many years now, and discussed my ideology with him for nearly as long. Uh, maybe argued is a better word for it. He told me a long time ago that no matter how strong of a swimmer you may be, you'll still get dragged under by the others who are drowning once you run out of stamina. He believes this is the fate that awaits all idealists. I still believe I should live by my ideals, and I've given him countless reasons why I think it's a good idea to do so. Perhaps my ideals are flawed, but are there really any perfect things in this world? Unfortunately, he remains unconvinced. His personality is the exact opposite of my own. If someone happens to drown next to him, he'll most likely stand on the shore and mumble something along the lines of respecting other people's fates. But as you can see, I'm not the only idealist in the world. Just as there are different seasons, there are also different people. There are many others who will continue to care about the fates of those who are not directly related to them. And when I finally run out of stamina, someone will also reach out and bring me back to shore. Someone will help me, right? Yes, I've already been helped like that before. <laughs> but you've helped me plenty already. If you didn't reach out to me, I would probably be passed out on the tavern table right now instead of talking with Badawi. Either way, I'm feeling much better than when you first found me at the tavern. I can feel inspiration already welling up inside of me. Maybe this will be just the opportunity I needed to create a whole new style. All right, 
Let's head to Aru village. <laughs> now that we're here, it's my partner's time to shine. Marak! Oh, what's this? My toolbox. I built it using an ancient mechanical core. It's not too smart, but it's super useful and can help me with a variety of tasks. I'll take Marak and find a suitable location for the building. Once that is done, I'll get to work on a few designs. Traveler? Ah, you know each other? Hello. I suppose you must be Kave from Kasharawar. I have heard of you before. My name is Sitaria, and I'm currently the person in charge of promoting educational assistance programs here in the desert. Educational assistance programs? Hmm... I can't say I'm too familiar just yet, but if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. I've been commissioned by Mr. Badawi to build a library in the desert. We've settled on the general design direction, but we are trying to finalize some details based on the conditions around the intended location. A library? Do you intend to open it to the public for free? That's right. I want to make sure the children will have books to read. That's fantastic! I'm sure the children will be thrilled. Right now, we don't have access to many paper books or a quiet place to read. Truth be told, this very thing has been keeping me up at night. Let me get straight to my questions, then. Can you estimate the number of children around here who'd be interested in reading? Besides the usual noise of village pedestrians, are there any other sources of noise in the village? Oh, and have any landslides occurred here recently? And also, where are the spots around the village that have been most affected by wind and erosion? All right, that should be everything. Badawi, let's go over the budget again. We'll keep the building structure the same, but make the place a little bigger, so it'll be able to hold more people and get better natural light. The parts of the project that cost the most will be the insulation and ventilation materials. I'm sure you understand. No one likes to read in a place that's hot and stuffy. I want to make significant changes to the arrangement of the bookshelves, tables, and chairs. I'll go over the specifics of that shortly. I have two plans in mind. Both are pretty minimalist in style, but will provide a very different ambiance from the world outside. Our final cost should be around 70% of the last figure I quoted. The whole thing should take around half a year to complete. Maroc has produced a sketch for all of you to see. If everyone's okay with it, then we'll proceed with that as the formal plan. The inspiration just came to me naturally. All I did was put thoughts to paper. I must give you credit, though. If it weren't for your advice and suggestions, I probably wouldn't have landed on this new style so quickly. According to the traditions of my profession, I should probably name this style after you. Let's call it the Traveler Style. In the meantime, let's look forward to the day when this building is completed and can finally open its doors. Thank <laughs> you.